Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. We are going to continue with our Fire Elementalist tutorial today. And I forgot what I called him. Norb Gordon? No. Flutelban, that's right. Okay, I believe we left him in the lair. A second level. We're taking this fairly slowly. We've got Mephitic Cloud as well as our usual array of fire spells and nothing else to choose from. Did I make a stash? I think I did on layer one. So let's just go back and drop this book. There we go. And we have Orb of Destruction that will come in handy. We also have Firestorm already. But let's get rid of this book and we will also drop this armor and I suppose we'll test out these wands as well. Fire. Okay, we'll drop the fire wand and the confusion wand and the empty wand of cold. No, we'll keep that. Just No, we'll drop it. Let's also get rid of these scrolls here. Ench well, this scroll, I suppose. Enchant weapon. And we're going to need some more Identify Scrolls pretty soon, so let's go find some. Okay, we're right next to a Water Moccasin. Let's sticky flame him. Hit him with our sword. There we go. A sticky flame made short work of both of them. And these two are candidates for a fireball. We'll let him get a little closer, sticky flame him, and run away. Oh, here's another one. We'll just let our sticky flame work on him while we recover a little bit of mana here. That's the power of sticky flame. Uh, what are we training here? Dodging is at 10.3. Let's turn it off and start training armor and after that we'll start training fighting and get them all up to 10 and continue to train fire magic and spell casting. We're also going to want some conjurations pretty soon as well but uh, three spells or three skills of magic is I'm not pushing it but it's better to train less. Here's an unidentified scroll. Let's check it out. Brand weapon, huh? Well, our dagger is already branded. I want to cancel it. Unfortunately, we don't have another weapon, but I want the protection brand on this. I'm not really using it as a weapon, I'm just using it for the protection, so. Rebranding a dagger is fairly useless at this point. Oh, and we found an amulet of the Gorman. Great. One of my favorite amulets. Not really necessary, but it just makes things less tedious with chunk eating. There's a box of beasts. Um, I believe that will release a whole bunch of beasts that are not necessarily friendly or possibly all hostile. I've never really used it. I'm not quite sure if it requires evocations training, but it's not something I really want to explore in this run. We're going to try and stick strictly to fire elementalism. Just mop these guys up, and here comes the evil orc wizardress. Let's just get out of here. She shouldn't be too difficult to, to take out. I just want to get her when she's not surrounded by rats or blink frogs. Let's 
let's let the blink frogs come. Um, I suppose I'm going to make a bit of a racket here. And this might draw her to me. Level 13. We'll just hang out in this cul-de-sac. And I think Amulet of the Gourmand does not kick in right away, and now it's time to eat our fill here. They do that so you can't just get engorged and swap the amulet out. Which is fine. Ooh, another book. What do we have? War Chance. Repel missiles and regeneration are definite spells I want to have. So let's get them. And I believe that will require some charms. So let's start training that. And we'll turn off fire magic for a little bit. And here is another unidentified scroll. Let's try it out. Vulnerability. And here is a nice longsword. We'll pick that up for now. It's too bad we wasted our scroll of brand weapon. Okay. Here she is again with yet more rats. So let's just back her off here. Oh, I keep forgetting I have Mephitic Cloud. Um, yeah, let's Mephitic Cloud them. And anybody that dares to come through the cloud gets sticky flamed. We can use our flame tongue on the rats. Where did she go? She's around here somewhere. Here comes a yak. Now I'm training armor even though I'm only wearing, I think leather armor, yeah. But hopefully I, I will move up to a better tier of armor soon. And I'm always looking for my favorite defensive spells. Uh, she got off a cast here. I'm going to ignore the all the orcs around me and just continue to fireball her. One more hopefully should do. And then we're going to have to figure out a way to deal with the orcs. I'm going to have to move here. There, she's dead. I don't have much in the way of mana left. Okay, it's time to run. There's no point in fighting the orcs, they'll, the orc ghosts or spectral warriors. They will disappear eventually. So let's just climb the stairs. I just fought that guy with my dagger. They're not too dangerous. But when you're in the middle of a cloud of them, they can be fairly dangerous. Oh, and they've drained me. Wonderful. That will go away eventually. Sticky flame. So one of the most important things in this game is just being aware of your surroundings and positioning. And experience and knowing what enemies are dangerous and what enemies aren't. I know this guy's slow, I'm just going to pepper him with flame tongue, hit him with a sticky flame, and back off until he dies. I gave him more or less one chance to hit me during that encounter. And I also know because my dodging's up to 20, which you'll still get hit a fair often at 20, so it's not a get out of jail free card by any means. But I know I could stand here against this uh, crocodile for instance for a couple turns and probably be okay and if it, even if he did hit me it wouldn't do enough damage to to kill me okay we're gonna back off here and try to find an area with a choke point like this we will get a couple of conjure flames up now I think you'll notice that the damaged oh there's a death yak. The damaged ones will not go through or they'll at least wait till they're not so damaged. There's a gift. 
Let's get a, a sticky flame on the death yak. I'm going to try and stand here and tank the death yak. I'm going to spend a turn picking up the book. Flame tongue him. Flame tongue him. And now I'm going to run. He's dead. And I'll sticky flame the rest if they come through. Let's see what sort of book we got. Mystic Blast, Bolt of Magma, Bolt of Fire. Bolt of Fire is worth picking up, but not yet. Fireball is still at little more than half, so we'll make do with that for now. Bolt of Fire is the more powerful spell, ultimately. Let's drop these chunks. Oh, I just walked into a bunch of death yaks. I was looking at the chunks. Not good. Okay, time to run. And sticky flame as we flee. Now that we've got a space between us, we're going to put up a conjure flame. I know this looks pretty bad, but I'm not too worried. They will all have to walk through there. I'm going to throw up a mephitic cloud once I get another space right there. It's probably not going to have much of an effect on them. It didn't at all. It did on the normal yak. And I'm just going to continue to flee until he's dead. Death yaks hit really hard, so you don't want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them for too long. There's another book. I'm going to reapply Sticky Flame here, just as I feared more rats. Now the rat's between me and the death yak, so I'm just going to pass and tank any damage the rat tries to uh, inflict on me, which wasn't much. Book of the Sky. Now I... oh, I don't have it. Well, flight is good, so we'll memorize that. And I thought it had swiftness, which what I was what I was really looking for. More rats. Might seem a little overkill to use fireball on them, but it's really the best use of mana since I can get several of them. Same with the situation. I'm going to set up a flame cloud in front of me. I'm going to mephit a cloud them. Let them walk into the fire. Any that gets through, I'm going to sticky flame. And I'm going to so sticky flame them in the fire as well. Only one got affected by the Mephitic Cloud. So let's go back, pass a little bit, and Sticky Flame. Rest up. We could use a little bit of dinner, so let's eat one of the yaks, and we're back to Engorge status. After you get used to the lair, there's... Actually, that's how every stage in this game goes. You die, you die, you die, you get used to what it's going to throw at you, and then you can pretty much get through it without thinking. I'm at that point now for the lair and the orcish mines. The vaults still kills me often, and the lower dungeon kills me often. I haven't seen everything that it has to throw at me. We are burdened and Wog is here. Now it's bad to be burdened. And Wog is an Earth Elementalist, and more than likely he has Stone Arrow by now. I want to get back to the stairs, but I'm going to be slow. Can he see invisible? No. So we're going to quaff this potion of inv invisibility, one of the few that have... Huh, that didn't seem to do much good. Anyway, we're, we're keeping ahead of him. Ow. And that was an iron shot. Immediately quaff a heal wounds. He casted butterflies, which is going to do me a lot better than him. And there's a chance he's going to stone arrow me again. I have to take it and go up the stairs. Okay, I mean iron shot me again. That iron shot almost one-shotted me. Let's go back to the stash. Now he is a deep elf, 
so I'm not too worried. Uh, the thing about the AI ghosts is they're not really too clever. They'll throw out an iron shot. If he had followed up with another iron shot, I would have been dead. But they're not quite smart enough to figure that out. So as long as I continuously fireball him from extreme range, we should be okay here. And is there anything else I can do to protect myself? Let's take a look. Potion of resistance would be... Oh, that won't help. Unfortunately, Iron Shot ignores all resistances. It's irresistible. Was he down on six? Yeah, okay. We got Mystic Blast... Or we got uh, Lee's Rapid Deconstructed there. That's fine. Three Fireballs, and he's dead. He had a chance to Iron Shot me again there, but... Like I said, the, the AI is not too smart. Even if, it, even if your opponent is more powerful than you... You can generally take him out with, as long as you get him alone, and as long as you throw everything you have at him immediately. Of course, there's always the chance that they'll kill you, but that's dungeon crawl for you. It's a game of risk management. Let's eat up this hippogriff. And I'm still using mostly my flame tongue, sticky flame, and when the situation calls for it, fireball. So my armor is 3.7 charms. We'll get up to we'll get up to about five. Huh. It looks like some unfortunate adventurers died here. <laughs> And uh, all of the weapons here, you'll notice, are are uh, of negative value. Just a little hint at what is ahead in the slime pits. We're not going to go in there. And we've got to watch out for those walls. They corrode. I don't think they've corroded anything. No. Luckily, there were no slimes there. The dungeon has not been very kind to us in this run. Although I think we have some identify scrolls, so let's burn a couple of those and get some of these potions identified. The dungeon may have been kinder to us than originally appears, because one of these might be a beneficial mutation. And speaking of which, there is a beneficial mutation potion upstairs and we're going to abandon everything and go up and get that right now let's just identify the last potions agility okay okay that's on dungeon level 8 490 gold we can certainly afford it let's go and thanks to our amulet of the gourmand we're not going to get hungry He was invisible there, but I knew where he was. I bumped into him, and I just sticky flamed him to render him visible. Oh, here's our old friend, the imps. Let's see if I can take him out with my dagger. Apparently not. Uh, let's wield the long sword, see if we can take him out. There we go. That did the job. Let's refill our hunger, our hunger here, and buy our beneficial mutation potion. Excellent. We will quaff it immediately, and I am hoping for a resistance, but let's see what happens. You feel clever. Intelligence plus two. I can't complain about that. Okay, let's go back to layer six. And we'll see if we can polish off the rest of the lair in this video. If you're not feeling confident about the lair, sticky flame as usual, uh, 
it's better to leave layer 8. That's a little bit trickier. You usually at least have a, a pack or two of death yaks, an elephant, possibly some dire elephants. It really depends on the branch ending. If you see a bunch of trees, that'll be the Spriggan branch ending. That's actually a pretty tricky ending. The Spriggans are very quick. Um, in terms of lairs, this has been a, a fairly easy one, as far as I can recall. So far, it might get a lot more difficult downstairs. So, let's just take out these fish here. So if you're not feeling confident, leave the last level of any branch. It's going to be the last, the most difficult. And go off and do something else. You can go down the dungeon level a couple of times. Um, it all depends. I wouldn't venture too much deeper in the dungeon without um, some way to see invisible because of invisible horrors. I'll just die, guys. Yeah, um, you might want to go into the snake pits if you found poison resistance and do the first couple levels of that. If you found fly, you might want to go into the shoals. Although shoals is definitely the most difficult of the uh, branch endings. Potion of cure mutation. Now why am I full? I don't want to be burdened here. I should have dropped off the the long sword there. Let's just test this wand. Wand of slowing. We'll drop it. That's not going to do me any good, nor is the paralysis. Nor is all this food. I don't have to carry all this food with Gorman now. After this floor, we will... Uh, oh, more rats. After this floor, we'll go back up to the stash and drop off the stuff. Oh, okay, I know this fault. After a while, you get to know what what you're about to face. A lot of this game is, is just experience. This is full of worms, and this is actually fairly dangerous. Not necessarily these red worms, but the green ones are. I'm just sticky flaming and passing. Now, if you sticky flame something that is in water, it won't take any damage. Uh, it will take initial damage, but then it will duck back into the water. Now that I have a space, I'm going to fireball. And these guys deserve to be fireballed. And I'm out of mana. But they're not going to follow me out of the water, so I'll just go back here, rest up, and back into it. Let's see if I can draw them out. We'll sticky flame the middle guy. Yeah, you see they do tremendous amounts of damage. And they're hard to kill because they like to hide in the water like that. Let's eat this crocodile and think about what we, what we should do here. Um, what we can do is dig out the wall He's almost dead. One of them's dead. Okay. And I think that's all of them. So let's try and rest here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, in this situation, the Basilisk is the enemy I want to target first because he can petrify me. That allowed the Crocodile to get aside me, and I just sticky flamed him and ran away. If you'll notice, I'm not really using my fit of cloud too much. I'm pretty much sticking to the first, uh, our first book that we got. Throwing in the occasional fireball, sticky flame. The boulder beetles, you have to watch out that they don't hit you when they roll, but they can't turn very well when they're rolling, so just uh, step aside. They are fairly tough, however. But our sticky flame is getting very powerful now. We do not need a water fireball. Ours is better. Oh, 
Let's put up a conjure flame here. Oh, he's smart enough not to walk into it. But he's still dying to my sticky flame, so. Okay, I took a, an extra step there and we have enemies off to the east. So immediately let's retreat to a better position. That's the kind of awareness you need to cultivate when you play Crawl. Just always be aware of what's coming at you. And of course Yaks come in packs, so there's more. Hmm. Can't get them together for a good fireball. Here we go. I can at least get two of them. And then two again. And the last one can die to a simple flame tongue. So once you get your sticky flame workable, make sure you start to train dodging so you can stand next to the creatures and sticky flame them. Generally one hit is not going to kill you, but you saw what happened with that uh, iron shot. I almost died with one iron shot there. Uh, more of my favorite enemies here. Did I miscast that? I did. What's my miscast chance on fireball? 1%. So you see, it still does happen once in a while. Okay, is this a lone yak or not? Do I want to walk this way into the unknown? Or this way, possibly towards more yaks? The safest thing to do is walk away from the yak and into the known, which is down here. And I can almost guarantee you there's nothing here. Looking at the map, you can tell that there might be a little corner. But you never know, there might be an enemy in there, there might be a hydra. And I'm not even sure I've seen a Hydra in this lair so far. Okay, let's just pop up back to the stash. Actually should have eaten that yak, but we're still full, that's fine. Drop off our excess stuff here. We will drop this sword for now, maybe we'll take up sword work later. Do I have a food stash? Yes, I do. Let's drop uh, 12 of the honeycombs, the banana, the bread rations, three of the meat rations, and everything else. We've also managed to get quite a collection of scrolls. We'll drop uh, four of the teleportations, the enchant weapon, one of the magic mapping, uh, three of the remove curse, the vulnerability, uh, two of the blinking, and that's good. We'll also drop the cure mutation potion and anything else we don't really want to lose. Might's not going to do us any good, and seven potions of curing is a little excessive. I might as well stash one potion of agility. And we can fly, so we'll also drop potions of flight. And speaking of which, my trading charms too much, I am. We'll train it up to six. Our air is already quite good. We could train necromancy up a little bit for regeneration. I almost forgot I had those spells. So down we go to layer eight. And this is where you want to be a little careful, as you can see. We dropped into quite a pile of enemies already. This is a very bad entrance, but I'm just going to shake them up a little bit. Climb up, drag a couple of them with me, and sticky flame them down. Now since we've attracted all attention in that area, we're just going to pop down a different staircase. And I think I'm going to slowly, manually explore around the staircase. Auto Explorer can get you into trouble under some circumstances, so let's just make sure there's nothing dangerous around here. It's a good opportunity to test this wand. We'll see what it does. It's draining. Sticky 
you flame the Komodo dragon. Oh, he's regenerating quite quickly. Okay, I pressed auto explore there when I didn't really mean to. So we'll continue around the perimeter of the map just so we cannot um, get swarmed and get stuck in the middle. At least we have our back to one wall. And we'll pick up the odd bit of treasure along the way. And of course, sticky flame, anything that dares to attack us. An amulet here, this might prove useful. I don't think I'll swap out Gourmand, but you never know. An amulet of faith is nice, but it's also nice to get early. Okay, looks like we have the um, the Spriggan branch ending here. I'm going to conjure a flame and burn down the forest. And I'm going to cloud them up. Um, that was not a very effective forest burn there. Let's try again. There we go. I uh, taught them a lesson. Uh, these black bears can be quite dangerous. Let's mephitic cloud them. Uh, the spriggan is clever enough not to walk into the fire. Let's back up. It's uh, important not to get swarmed by these Spriggans. They can be pretty tough and they're very hard to hit. Although I don't think they have a chance at defending against Fireball. When you see a Spriggan Druid, you want to take those out immediately. They can control the trees. Okay, all sorts of nasties are coming now. And I'm running low on mana. And I probably want to stop training charms. Let's stop that. I'm very tempted to put on invocations. I think I will. We'll drop armor for now. And we'll train conjurations up a little bit. I'm just going to retreat and Sticky Flame as I go. Somehow I missed the Spriggan with Sticky Flame. Let's see what kind of Saber he has. Saber of Speed, okay. I think I'll stick with our Dagger of Protection. Let's see if we can burn down the forest a little bit. We'll lure them in. I'm going to cloud them. And start a forest fire right about there. And maybe there. Haha. <laughs> Just stand back from your forest fires because they really tend to spread. They're a little unpredictable. Here's a ruined dagger. Might as well check that out. And where the statue is, is usually where the treasure is. In this case, it appears to be garbage treasure. Yeah, a nagabarding and some QRA needles. All pretty useless to me. These forest paths are usually fairly extensive. They might occupy as much as a third of the map. Sticky flame, please. It's nice to have a spell like Sticky Flame and Fireball when you fight Spriggans. If you're... a lot of spells you'll find will miss the Spriggans. Their dodging is so good. Let's get this book. A book of conjurations, huh? Oh. And now we're almost out of mana. We're gonna 
sticky flame and pass and tank any damage that comes at us. And now I'm just fighting with my dagger. There we go. We can sticky flame him. Let's see what kind of spells we have here. Battle Sphere. Hmm. Well, it certainly can't hurt to memorize Battle Sphere. I believe I have the spell levels for it. And I have the training for it. Unfortunately, it's on the J key. Let's, let's change that. Press equals, spells. We want to change from J to, let's say, X. I don't know what poisoned me there. Oh, there's a spiny frog right behind me. How did I not see that? Uh, sticky flame. And uh, you'll notice that Battle Sphere is kind enough to shoot when even even when you sticky flame somebody. Oh, a crude bow. This is definitely worth picking up. Let's see what it does. Venom and see invisible. Hmm. I am really tempted to see how well this is enchanted, so I'm going to... Wow. Plus 9, plus 10 bow. That is really almost worth picking up bows as a weapon for. I will draw up the Saber of Speed. I'll uh, re-equip my dagger, and I'm really tempted to use that bow. Unfortunately, it's not really that good with a caster. Now I'm using my battle sphere and just my flame tongue. And that should prove a potent, potent and uh, mana-saving combination. Here I'll use Fireball since there's three of them. Get another Battle Sphere up. Sticky Flame them. I took a hit there, getting my Sticky Flame in. But it wasn't that bad, and I didn't get poisoned. Oh, here's a Hydra. Okay. We'll get him with a Fireball. And now he's in range of our Flame Tongue, so let's Flame Tongue him. And with the aid of our Battle Sphere, it's a piece of cake. Let's go hunt down that black bear, recover our mana, and finish up the last level of the lair. All in all, this has been... Just checking my training here. This has been a pretty useless lair, really. And I haven't had much luck in the way of um, of a run here, uh, as far as what the dungeon's given me. The best thing I found is that bow. I'd really love to turn into an archer right now, but an archer and a spellcaster. I mean, you'd have the choice of shooting an arrow or using your spells, and of course you'd use your spells because they're already trained, so it's really hard to justify that. As far as what the dungeon's given me, the best thing I've really found is the uh, plus three leather armor. I haven't really found any good scrolls. I guess the the uh, beneficial mutation is a good one. I'm going to blow an identify scroll on this amulet as well. Guardian spirit, that's useless. Useless to us because it'll drain your mana. So yeah, I, I more or less got through the entire lair 
using just the book of fire, the initial book. Let's go back to the stash. So that is the layer completed. I, I definitely used Mephitic Cloud a little bit during that, and uh, what else did I use? I didn't use Repel Missiles. I didn't even use Regeneration or Flight. I did use Battle Sphere a little bit towards the end, but that just made things a little easier. More or less I used Conjure Flame, Flame Tongue, Fireball sparingly really, and Sticky Flame mostly. So that's how you run a Fire Mage and get through the lair. Uh, we'll continue this with the Orcish Mines next time. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.